And welcome back to Your Regina 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina uh, as part of a computer science degree. And today we're going to be uh, not going very deeply into the math and logic and that sort of stuff, but more just sort of on the life experience side. And unfortunately, this lesson, uh, although I can tell you my thoughts on it, I can't get you through the whole ordeal. Uh, so you're going to have to do some living uh, one way or the other. You're going to have to make a choice, and you're going to have to live with the consequence of your choice and kind of develop yourself as a person based on which you choose. And the other uh, thing is that there's kind of a caveat here, which is that there's a, exceptions for pretty much everything I'm going to say in this video. Uh, I've known many people, I've lived with many people, but my experience is not exhaustive or possibly even representative of anything. Uh, this is just from what I've been able to see, what I've been able to experience, and so on. Uh, and just sort of, sort of as a side note, uh, going back to the Great White Combine video, uh, I have been lucky in that I've been able to draw on a family that supported me, uh, friends that I've made, uh, and a kind of society that treats me with a, maybe not respect so much. Uh, but a, at least a chance here and there that I've been able to make use on and survive and get my degree, etc. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, the, the, I guess, point today is that uh, when you go to university, uh, very often, uh, one of the things that is part of the university experience is you move out of your parents' house, uh, you go and live in the dorms in the university, uh, or maybe not in the dorms. You may move somewhere else, uh, and you may move in with some friends, some random people. Uh, maybe you live alone in an apartment. Uh, maybe even not. Maybe you stay at home and live with your parents uh, by choice or otherwise. But these are this kind of decision or this situation is a common one for university students to be put in. Uh, so when I was a university student, I moved to Regina from Saskatoon. Uh, I lived in a house in the north end, the university's in the south end. It's quite a distance to the university, uh, so there's there was that. But even before that, uh, I mean, I, I worked in Saskatoon for a while, uh, and I you know, slept a lot of nights on uh, friends' places, etc. Uh, I just sort of made it work. Uh, but there, it's worth thinking about. Uh, especially if you're if you're approaching university as a potential student or thinking about you know how exactly you're going to make the rest of your life work, whether or not uh, to stay another day or another month or another year with your parents versus moving out, going into the dorms or going into the, the city or wherever. And this is going to depend on a lot of factors, and you're going to want to consider all the factors involved because it's a big decision, although. Sometimes it's reversible, sometimes it isn't. Uh, sometimes you can get away with uh, moving out and your parents uh, won't uh, you know, cut you out of the will or uh, you know, completely stop talking to you. Other times they kind of demand that you do exactly as they say uh, and you kind of have to live with that. Uh, and so th there's a whole bunch of consequences to either way you can make this decision. Uh, the biggest one is probably that as a young person, uh, your biological clock is probably kicking like crazy, uh, especially if you're a guy. Uh, you probably have the, you know, the, the beginning urges of nesting and mating uh, kind of ready for you. You're surrounded by beautiful women at the university all the time, uh, and your house that you grew up in is probably not optimized for your privacy. It's not optimized for your ability to find and attract a mate and to engage in mating activity with them. It is optimized for raising children. And so this is not something that is going to be very useful for you. Mo again, most of the time. There's going to be exceptions to this, but if you, you know, grow up in a middle class uh, life, you'll probably run into this situation at some point in your life. And this privacy is important uh, because if you're able to get privacy, uh, you're, you'll probably be able to use that to experiment in developing who you are, in developing uh, experiences in uh, various subject matters, not necessarily limiting or, or limited to sex and drugs, but that those are two certainly big things that often come along with the university experience. And so you might only be able to do these sorts of things if you're in private or if you have some degree of privacy. It does obviously doesn't have to be absolute. Sometimes you can get away with it. Uh, 
regardless of what situation you're in, if you're clever enough. But uh, you know, you're you'll be able to do more of it if you have m more control over your immediate environment, which you will be able to do if you move up on your own and have access to your own space. Uh, you'll be able to choose your friends to some extent uh, and to choose the people that you're associating with to a larger extent, again, if you have the privacy and space to be able to do so. Of course, uh, there's a trade-off there because when you be have the option to choose, uh, you also start losing the kind of default choice that you may have inherited uh, as part of your family upbringing. So, for example, when you start associating with one group of people that your parents don't directly choose, which again, it's a natural part of growing up, you may lose contact with the people that your parents associate with and their children, etc. Uh, and so it's worth keeping that in mind. Um, and so there's kind of the, these trade-offs all over the place. And But one of the other important ones is that there's value in being able to survive off of your own efforts. Uh, now obviously you may not have uh, you know, 100% uh, ability to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Uh, obviously some people do this. There are refugees in coming out of Syria right now. Some of them are going to be able to get into universities in Europe. It's going to happen. There's a hun hundreds of thousands of them. They're going to have all sorts of experiences and a good deal many are going to survive. Uh, let's hope most, of, if not all of them do. Uh, but So it's certainly possible to survive off of absolutely nothing. Uh, but being able to pay rent being able to live beyond the goodwill of other people uh, both empowers you and allows you to experiment and change the conditions of your life to change the people that you associate with. And again, it's worth pointing out that the people who you associate with change your character. It's not absolute. You can associate with your you know, bad cookies all you want, uh, and if you're you know, righteous enough, you can kind of get away with it. But uh, there people do have an effect on each other. Mirror neurons are a thing. You are going to be affected by the people around you, their experiences, their ideas, their political views. Uh, you know, Facebook is, is selling your credit data, uh, or selling your, your friendship data to credit uh, companies so that they can uh, change your credit rating based on who you associate with. And again, that's because the people around you affect you. They affect you in a deep way. The longer you stay around them, the more that they affect you the more that their perspectives inform your perspective and so on. So you have to be in control, or you have to choose how much in control, first of all, that you want to be over who's in your life, how much you want your parents or whoever brought you up to be in control of the people in your life. Again, so with an eye to, to try to make of yourself whatever it is that you choose to make, whether it's the, you know, the best person you can be, or maybe it's just whatever the default is because you're lazy. Uh, regardless, it's something that you want to think about coming into the situation and as the situation develops. And so other things that you're allowed or able to do when you live on your own is control when and how much you eat. Uh, this is kind of an important thing because we live in a, a, a continent that or at least I live in a continent that is currently affected by an obesity, uh, obesity epidemic. And so you, you have a millions of people who are overweight, and a lot of the reason that they're overweight is not just entirely because the food that we're eating is kind of changing to have more sugars and stuff in it, but we're losing control of when and how much we eat. So we, we are a social species. When I go to the you know, house I'm staying at right now, uh, there, there's probably food that is either uh, kind of available or that I'm able to cook for the, the people that I live with. Uh, in any case, it's a shared experience. And sharing food is good. Breaking bread with people is good. Uh, you should try to eat with other people very often in your life because it's a social, or it's a chance to be social that sort of comes free because you have to eat and other people have to eat. And if you eat together, often enough times you can also share, you know, conversation, your, your kind of emotional state can be uh, moderated by, by being, you know, participating in this ritual with other people, and so on and so forth. But, but again, if you want to control when and how much you eat, you're going to have to have some degree of independence from your family unit. Uh, and so if you are in a situation where maybe your family is overweight, uh, or isn't as good as controlling their intake of food as you would like to be, that should be one thing that factors into your decision 
about whether to stay or go because being able to control your weight allows you to control the, how other people perceive you. And as I don't like it, but uh, one of the things that, uh, again, that I've kind of picked up is how important it is to appear a uh, good looking. And this, this isn't a uh, sanctioning of that, uh, but it is, if you want to be successful in life, you'll probably want to put some effort towards how you appear to others. And so again, if that means controlling your weight, and that means controlling what you eat, and that means having some degree of independence of what, when and how much you eat, uh, which again depends on whether or not you are living on your own terms or whether you're living on the terms of your family unit or someone else who is supporting you. So it's worth thinking about at the very least. You know, write it down. Put in your put in writing so that you can tell yourself later why you made the choice that you did for this particular topic. Uh, also, again, going back to the mating thing, you can choose who you date or who you don't date when you're uh, living on your own. Again, if you're living with your parents, you may not have absolute choice over that particular topic. And there's nothing that you can do uh, other than maybe you know discussing calmly with them of to kind of change that situation other than, of course, getting more independence, uh, which, again, isn't per, you know an ideal situation for everything, but it will help with that particular topic. It also allows you to add more risk to your life. Uh, so if you want to endanger yourself and get yourself into risky situations late at night or otherwise, uh, that's something that if you have independence, you're able to do. But again, if you don't have all that much independence in your life and you're being supported by the people around you, you're not able to get those risks. And not all risks are not worth taking. Uh, you, there are some risks that there is a reward for engaging in them. You know, if you work for 80 hours in a row, that's really unhealthy and you can really kind of damage yourself by you know, abusing your body in that way. But again, if you do that, you probably get paid for it. And so there's a reward for it. That's just the thing that comes to mind. There are plenty of risks and rewards in life that you want to think about. And so the, the larger the space between your parents and or whoever supports you, uh, the greater the degree of freedom you're going to have. And that freedom allows you to grow as a person, to become more confident in who you are and what you're capable of, aware of your abilities and your limitations, and will probably give you a better eye for what the people around you are going through in their life and the struggles that they're facing and the, experiencing or the experiences that they are encountering. Because if you live an entire life sheltered in the kind of house of your parents, you won't necessarily understand what it is to work uh, to support yourself and to work you know, your two full-time jobs and not have enough to eat afterwards. Those are things that you just won't experience or won't have any context to understand. But again, is it, worth, is it worth going through them? Again, that's a, that's a choice that's up to you. At the same time, the, the uh, kind of further into the, the, the degrees of freedom that you go, the less the, the people who brought you up will be able to support and help you. And also, the less that they'll be interested in you. It's not an absolute thing, uh, again, most of the time. Uh, your, uh, my parents would certainly support me, me no matter what I did. Uh, but the further away you get, the, the kind of more distant they become. And it's just a fact of geometry, of geography. You know, if you're far away, you don't encounter the, the other person, you don't, you start not to think about them all that much. Uh, you'll, you'll always think about them to some extent, but it just becomes easier to, and easier to get into your own thoughts and your own world uh, and to kind of surround yourself with them, especially once you start moving around. On the extreme case, uh, some people, especially with money, uh, who have their education entirely paid by their parents, uh, I have noticed kind of in peers, emotional wrecks, uh, constantly depressed because their parents were so controlling of their behavior, because their parents were so kind of um, kind of directly uh, impacting their emotional states and, and kind of directing who and what they did with their life. Uh, taking up all kinds of or all kinds of time that they could use for other things, uh, and in general, kind of browbeating them for their beliefs, their stances, their activities, and basically for everything associated with their identity. For those people, there is nothing that they could do to seem good enough in the eyes of their parents, and that's not necessarily a healthy situation. But again, they're kind of an extreme case. 
So when there's a lot of money and a lot of risk and a lot of status involved, uh, you can see stuff like that emerge. Uh, but again, it's, it's a choice whether to participate in that. Uh, and you have to come into that choice being aware that there's a choice being made. You can always walk away, but uh, you can't always stick. So it's, again, worth thinking about. And, of course, working to live is hard. Minimum wage is not enough to afford an apartment on your own, uh, at least in this country. And it wasn't really when I did it either. Uh, you, can, you can starve to death. You can freeze to death in the winter. Uh, your life is at stake when you put your own life in your hands. Yes, there are social programs, but the social programs have been eaten away by decades of conservatism, and so there's, they're not as present as they may seem at times. Uh, so you have all the freedom that you need to make huge, huge mistakes, and you can pay dearly for them if you do so. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that uh, the way the family unit works changes over time. Uh, it has changed in my lifetime, uh, and I have, when I grew up, uh, most parents or most people with children were not divorced. This was something something that was just how Canadian society was, was put together. Uh, a lot of it was a sham. A lot of it was just uh, because there was no alternative. A lot of it was because people didn't know how to organize themselves in any better way, and that women didn't have a lot of power in society. Uh, and some of those things have changed, and some of the consequence of that is that divorce rate went well, quite high uh, compared to what I grew up in. Uh, and at the same time as that, the cost of living went up, and the cost or the, the average wage rate has more or less been stable. Uh, so you have a change in how people live, how uh, on a statistical level. Obviously, there there there's still single parents. There's still people who are not single. Parents. There's still uh, pretty much any situation you could name, but the statistical trend uh, at a general level uh, is different. And so uh, when people are able to afford vehicles uh, or, or, and you know, they, they live with their parents until they can afford a vehicle and then they're gone. Uh, and that, that happened in history. Uh, at the flip side, uh, there have been times and in cultures, uh, families that grew very large. So you have like three or four generations in a single household uh, with many small children, uh, you know, each generation having many, many offspring. Uh, and so there's the, the kind of split between that and the, the kind of two parents with the kid that's already gone because they have their, their vehicle and everything in between. And so if you're looking at your situation as quote unquote normal, uh, you, one thing that may be valuable is to look at, at families in history and see is there any other way that we could organize ourselves? Is there any way that you know we could be working together more or less? Uh, is, is there anything in the experimentation that different cultures have done with different arrangements of families uh, that uh, make it so that the current situation is not, uh, maybe it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, so if you're, if you're under a lot of kind of stress and tension, well, first of all, that's gonna happen. So. Uh, you're going to have to learn to deal with that to some extent, but it's also worth thinking about uh, that not, you know, not everyone has had the same family experience, and so there may be ways of, you know, becoming more or less independent that are are common enough in history. And just as an example of this, right now in Canada, a substantial portion of people under 30 uh, or even at 30 are still living with their parents. In this, this, the, the proportion is much, much higher than it was when I was uh, younger, uh, and it, back then it would have seemed ridiculous, and I'm sure to the boomers that are still out there, it still does seem ridiculous, but this is just something that you can do. It's not necessarily good or bad, it's just a choice that can be made, uh, or maybe a default, or, or something that people can live with. Uh, whether they're happy or not, it's something that you can survive doing, it's something that you can thrive doing, and it's something that you can use to your advantage, not necessarily as an individual, but as a family, and as a family unit. Uh, so it's worth thinking about. So in general, university is a chance for you to establish who you are, or and who you would like to be. And some things are only possible with the concerted efforts of multiple people, sometimes even multiple generations of people, pulling in one direction. Families that can pull this off can do quite well compared to the efforts of uncoordinated individuals. Uh, so, 
you, you can get into a situation where you know people who, who aren't thinking on the level of families can drink their fortunes away even if they had the chance of being able to group together and work together and accomplish relatively large things going all the way up to getting to the moon. Um, so there is, of course, on the flip side, uh, institutional inertia in large families that keeps some possibilities unmet where the family can't pivot itself fast enough and can't see opportunities as they come up. But generally, you can survive through situations that individuals can't. And you can get through in situations without being scathed as much as just individuals facing that situation alone. So it's worth thinking about. Um, and you, so, so really you, what you should be thinking about isn't so much whether or not you want to continue living with your parents, although that's an important thing to think about too, but it's the broader questions of who you want to be, what you want to accomplish with your life, what your family is interested in supporting you with, uh, and you shouldn't necessarily allow people on the internet, such as myself, or people on TV, uh, such as you know, a anyone else on, on video screens, to kind of make you feel horrible about the choices that you are making with regards to the goals that you're setting after you've done so. So you should be kind of justifying to yourself and only taking from your justification and your family's justification uh, whether or not you're succeeding at that. So what you, again, should be asking is what do you want to get out of your life? Do the goals that you intend to seek need for you to stay at home and to continue to rub up against the limits of those that you live and care about as emotionally charged as those are? Or would it be better to rub up against the limits of some perfect stranger, separated maybe by some concrete walls, uh, even if you're you know, ab unable to, to kind of get I as much from your family as you might be able to, say for example, from not being able to pay rent, for example. Uh, so th these, again, are choices that you're gonna have to think about, uh, put some thought into, learn some math so that you can do cost-benefit analyses, um, and expose yourself, or uh, consider the value of exposing yourself to a variety of other different people, uh, because that has the effect of broadening your perspective and allowing you to make the choice in a more clear way. Obviously, that is going to involve, you know, taking some steps towards independence. So, uh, again, you've already kind of taken the first steps out, which could could be irreversible. Um, typically, families families are insul insular. Uh, in that they don't have a lot of variation in the family itself. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this, I'm not going to get into them, but in general families will have one kind of set of perspectives and it's very easily, or very easy once you start being independent to kind of step beyond them. And your family is probably not a special snowflake. Your family is probably very much like most of the families in your community, most of the families in your country, etc. There's going to be exceptions, some of our families are just plain crazy. But again, uh, at a broad statistical level, uh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have more homogeneity, homogeneity uh, within your family than outside. Um, and some people are going to suggest to wait until you're financially stable to move out, out of your parents' house, and that's not a bad idea. Uh, if you can do that, great. Uh, but on the flip side, sometimes you have to take a risk and you have to make it on your own without regards to uh, the kind of consequence of doing so. Uh, pack a suitcase and go to a new city with just the suitcase, maybe a personal computer so that you can connect to the internet. Uh, look very quickly for work, water, food, roommates and shelter in roughly that order uh, so that you can survive in that new city. If you can start work, you know, get some work and work hard, work your ass off so that you can survive. Uh, figure out how to do that. If you can't, you know, so be it. But Think about doing that, uh, and as an alternative to waiting until you're, until you're financially stable. But on the flip side, you waste a lot of time doing that. The time that you spend getting established in a new place, in a new city, is time that you could be spending towards bigger ends, like fixing cancer, uh, or you know, getting a degree, or, or whatever it is that you want to do with your life. Uh, those goals are going to be more difficult the more time you waste just surviving. Again, as mentioned, you know, learn some economics. Learn about how to do uh, uh, various kinds of analyses with data so that the, the things that you do have can inform the decisions that you do have to make. Uh, I was kind of lucky in that I did have the option of moving back, and 
I did move back in 2005 with my parents for a summer, uh, and there were various times that I came back and stayed as a guest for a while. Um, this is not to say everyone can, has a disability. Uh, many people don't, but it's worth thinking about if you do have that choice. And talk to your parents. I mean, you probably are going to fight with them uh, or, or whatever, but you know, just talk to them. Tell them about your goals. Tell them about what you'd like to do. If they don't support you, you know, great, that's their choice. They're also independent people. Uh, they're, you're going to have to work with them. And like other independent people, they're not always going to have your interests in mind uh, for every particular situation. Uh, and so it's up to you to stay or go, whether or not, the, on balance, uh, you can make or not make progress towards your particular goals. Uh, other things to consider. Uh, how much are you traveling every day? If you have a car, you probably don't think about this all that much. But if you're on foot, and if you actually care about your impact on the environment, uh, your travel time to various things is going to be not necessarily nothing. You know, I spent uh, two and a half hours going from place to place uh, on an average day in some parts of my life, or more. Uh, and so that can add up very quickly. And so your parents may not live next to the university that you wish to attend. Or they may not live close to the hackerspace that you know you want to build or, or you know, support as, as part of your life. Or they may not live close to downtown where a social activity happens or where there's jobs or, or your local factory that makes, who knows, hot dogs or whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, they probably put their house in a place that is safe to raise children and or maybe it's just whatever they could afford. Who knows? They made it for their particular needs and wants. And those aren't necessarily going to be the ones that you need. So with time, as you expand your horizons, you're going to want to travel more. You're going to have more travel time. And at some point, the time that you spend tra just traveling and getting around, it's going to make sense to just move somewhere closer to where you need to be so that you can get from place to place in a more reasonable amount of time uh, so that you can, again, uh, save your, your time for work, save your time for other activity that you would like to accomplish things with, uh, and so on. So in short, this isn't a simple decision. Uh, going from you know, living with your parents uh, to not uh, may not be a uh, you know, black and white thing. There may be you know, shades of gray in between. There may be you know, situations where you can do it for a while and come back. There may not be. Sometimes, you know, some people just don't have that option. Uh, and in either case, you know, think about your decisions in, in this particular situation because it's a big decision and it has a lot of impact on who you are, what you can do with your life. Uh, and you know, most of the time, sooner or later, you're going to move out. Control the conditions when that happens. Put some of your thought, put some of your time into just considering the consequences, regardless of which direction you go, uh, and make sure that the other people in your life, um, you know, help, are, are involved in this decision. Maybe they don't have to know everything about your thoughts. Maybe they don't have to know everything about why you're doing whatever you're doing. But, again, just work with them, think about it, uh, consider that cultures have done things differently uh, both across the world and across time and it may be worth learning from them and their experience. Uh, it's and as other videos, this is related to other things I've talked about, uh, specifically the backup space video. Uh, having a place to stay at your parents is handy, uh, but don't you know piss them off. Uh, intentionally, and, again, unless you choose to, but I live in something like over 20 places, maybe even over 30 places in my life, uh, so I would have need, or I would have needed in practice to have like 20 or 30 levels of backups uh, just to, to survive, really, uh, and so, uh, again, it's, it's worth making sure that as many of those as possible are still open, uh, again, subject to whatever it is you want to do with your life. And, of course, some places are just toxic. You know, if you're subject to abuse, don't put up with it. You know, why? You, you, can, you can survive in other places. Uh, even the, the refugees right now in Syria, most of them are going to survive. Most of them are going to, you know, have horrible, horrible experiences that are you know, borderline just as bad as whatever they would go through if they were still in Syria, but they're still alive. And likewise, you know, you, no matter how bad it is, there's probably somewhere in the world that you could find that would accept you and that would help you thrive. Uh, and as long as you're willing to work with other people, um, you can you can sometimes get away with that. Again, there's 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 some caveats to that. Uh, it's more different 
difficult for some people than others to be able to do this. Uh, again, go, go watch the Great White Combine video. Uh, I go into that in detail. But uh, if, if you're in a situation that you are in danger or that is just absolutely toxic, you know, consider walking. But again, there, there's going to be consequences for walking. Uh, sometimes you're screwed no matter what you do. So kind of keep that in mind. And as kind of a last point, uh, the, there is the question of academic freedom. And I have known many people uh, who have had to change their major or choose their classes or have had their, their choices in what they study and do with their lives in the academic world kind of nudged or chosen for them in some respect by their parents. Uh, and there's a long history of this happening. I was just reading this week of Isaac Newton's mother uh, basically trying to get him to not go to university. We as a species would be much, much poorer uh, if we did not have the genius of Isaac Newton playing with his chemistry as a student, uh, learning about how chemical reactions work, and encountering the great ideas of his time in Ca Cambridge or wherever else he went. You know, he, he was the perfect example of someone who we could easily have lost if his mother had succeeded in controlling the choices that he made to a larger degree. Not, you know, you may not be Isaac Newton, but at the same time, it's worth considering the amount of kind of power that comes with being able to choose your own path through the academic world. Uh, I can't choose that path for you. I can't make, you know, your character uh, better. I, 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 I can't improve your decisions. But again, it's worth thinking about them. It's worth uh, you know, knowing that they that this is something that is important. Uh, and hopefully you will take this in mind. So, as usual, if you'd like to ask about any particular situation in your life relating to the, the, the choice whether or not to stay or move or how to, to navigate um, the, 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 the question of you know, what, how much independence you should have in your life, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. Um, as usual, there is a Bitcoin donation address that should be available so that you can support my independence uh, as an independent person. I am, you know, I've been living on my own for quite some time, but I, I can absolutely use some Bitcoin uh, to continue to do so. And uh, there will be other videos in the future for you to watch. Hopefully you uh, watch them as well. See you then.